Hey, Janice. Hi, Anthony. Today, we're going to discuss how solo agers should hide cash and jewels at home. So lots of people like to keep some cash and their valuables uh, hidden at home. But if you do too good a job of hiding them, um, what happens? Then your heirs and execu- even, even your heirs and executor can't find them, and they end up lost or thrown away. So let's figure out how to avoid that, right? Okay. Okay, so, but first we're going to talk about why do people hide cash and valuables um, you know, in their home? A couple of reasons that come up most often is uh, number one, um, either for you know, folks. Some folks just don't trust banks or the government in general. But maybe they came from a you know they immigrated from a different country where you know banking was much less reliable, or maybe they uh, came or, or lived through a different era where where banking was much less reliable. Both can't can't blame them, right? No, absolutely not. Another uh, situation, especially with solo agers, is they have a lot of people coming in and out of their house. They have home aides, they have cleaning ladies, they have, um, you know, doctor's visits. And if and when the time comes, they will have EMTs tramping through their house. And they don't want, yeah, they don't want folks poking around and, you know, um, you know, accessing their valuables. Absolutely. If it's a revolving door of people, that's just, Yeah. Leaving and that is open. a legitimate concern. Um, we've been through this several times, Janice. Stuff goes, stuff, I mean, it's, I, I hate to say it, but stuff does go missing when, when folks um, get transferred to nursing homes or when they pass away. So it, it is real. It's a legitimate um, concern. Yep, absolutely. And then lastly, um, this is similar to the first one about not trusting banks, but, um, you know, folks who have lived through other eras or lived in different countries know that there can be uh, bank runs or panics and just like to have cash around um, or jewelries or other, you know, stores of value just because we, we, I think we all saw what happened with the toilet paper two years ago. Oh, yeah. I mean, that could right. easily be run on ATMs, right? <laughs> yep. So that's, that's it. it was, again, can't blame anyone and um, no, pretty understandable. So next, we'll talk about where not to hide cash and valuables uh, in your home. This is a, this is the do not do list. Do not. <laughs> so this list, don't do it. Yes. So this all boils down to do not hide it too well because, so we, we do this, you know, Janice, you and I, we, we, we're the ones who often go into the home after someone has passed away and we're in charge of, we're in charge of a lot of things and, you know, treasure hunting for the hidden cash and jewels is only one of many things we need to do. We need to get it cleaned out. Exactly. We need to document uh, items for the family members to see what they want to keep. We need to get it cleared out so that we can get it in broom, broom clean condition so that we can have it ready for sale all in a reasonably timely fashion at minimum cost. Does that yeah. sound about right? It, it sounds like you have plenty of time to go on a treasure hunt and look right. under and over <laughs> So if, if you're thinking, oh, of course they're going to tear up the floorboards and find my cash, and mm, we, we might not, you know, be, we, not, but we, may not be, we may not be in a situation to be able to be that diligent, okay? Um, so, for example, one of the common, here, here are some of the common things, um, places where, where folks hide things, and why we might miss it. <laughs> right. So wrapped in the, or in the freezer, wrapped in foil or in a Ziploc bag, okay? Um, when we're called in, Sometimes it's been a while, and it's not exactly pleasant going through the fridge. Oh, no. If the, do I need to be more explicit? There's, there's like no, rotting food, yeah. It's disgusting, yes, yes. Uh, even the freezer. Um, so, yeah, we, it's really not realistic for us to open every piece of foil-wrapped potential meat or, or oh, money no, <laughs> in the, in the no. fridge. Does that make uh, sense? Uh, oh, absolutely. Um, it's not a job uh, I'd really want to. Yeah, another about. another thing. Uh, folks sometimes hide um, cash or jewels in a, like in a Ziploc bag in the flour tin, or in the sugar uh, jar, or in a cereal box. Just we we don't have time to go through all those things. No, it's just bottom it, line. Yeah, and you know, in in cases like this where you're cleaning out homes that have a lot of food and have been sitting there a while, we we talked about this before. We hire the companies that come in and clean it out, so they are literally doing like a one arm sweep of all of the flour, sugar, cereal. Yep. Yeah. So. I mean, let me be clear. We try our best. You know, we, oh, we, we try to we try to hit all these items, but there's a lot going on and you just don't want us to miss it. Right. 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 Uh, inside books, like, you know, like a couple hundred dollar bills inside the, uh, you know, uh, flattened between the pages of books or even a, one of those hollowed out books that has like a, you know, a fake compartment. We can't pull every book off the bookshelf and and leaf through them. I mean, it's just not realistic, you know. Right. We'll check the dictionaries and the Bibles and the things that folks usually 
um, you know, kind of used as their hidden treasure places. But yeah. You know, if it's on page 256 of a John Grisham, we're not going to, you know, it's unlikely. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're certainly going to try, but sure, if you sure, have of course. 400 John Grisham novels sitting up there, we're not going to know yeah. which one. Taped underneath, on the underside of a drawer. So, you know, this, um, there are some entities or, or so, so for example, there are some uh, public administrators that will go in and you know, pull out every drawer and toss them, and, and ba- it'll basically look like somebody robbed the place, right? Um, we, we again, we, we we do our best to look around, but we don't. We don't. We, ha- we have a we have a sort of we have balancing act where we try to respect the um, the emotional reaction of the heirs. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't toss yeah. the place. We, I no, mean, our, no, our feelings. Don't. You don't toss the place like that. No, no. Yeah, it's it's almost disrespectful, right? If they come in and it just looks like it's been thrown about and. Um, I've actually found we were moving in an old farmhouse once and we were throwing away some of the old things that were left in there. And one was this uh, really heavy filing cabinet that was empty. It was really heavy because it was old. And so it took, uh, I think, like three men to move it down the stairs. And as they're moving it down the stairs, the bottom fell out Mm. and there were papers in it. But we would have never known there were a few pieces of paper at the bottom of a very heavy, empty filing cabinet. So. It was, it was the only heavy. by accident. Was there like gold bars in there? <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. Um, no, like just papers and, and things that must have been valuable to the owner. Yeah. But, you know, we never would have found it. Um, so another common hiding spot is like a, a cigar box. We usually mm-hmm. check those. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But again, you know, if we don't see it, if it's tucked away, you know, we might miss it. Uh, another another one that is pretty pretty um, high level is when where, where folks sometimes will sew into the lining of a coat, some cash or jewels. Oh, yeah. I mean, we might sort of do a pat down of some items, but come on. <laughs> that, yeah. That's that. I mean, we, uh, we did once, um, uh, Gina did once find cash in, a, I think it was a, a sofa cushion. It was like sewn really? in. Oh, wow. But she just like sort of happened to notice like, what is this lump? You know, it's we, we're not fluffing down every pillow in the house to look for, it's just not, it's, um, the, the likelihood that we'll find something versus the time we're spending and charging the estate. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But so. And like, like I said, this, this hidden drawer in the bottom of the file cabinet was just papers that were sentimental, right? Ah. So how long could you have taken to try to find these that cost the estate sentimental, right? Right. And then the last sort of common hiding spot that we don't, we do not recommend is uh, under the floorboards. Um, if there's something obvious, like a discolored board, we'll, we'll take a look. But we're not pulling up floorboard. You know, we can't just. Yeah, no. we're, we're not wrecking the house to try to find a possible no. missing, you know, valuable, right? Right, right. And the damage, right? So pulling up a floorboard isn't exactly just pulling it up and putting it back down. Oh, um, Salvation Army or other charitable air. The estate charged, you know, would charge you, uh, you know, a couple thousand bucks because to, to clean up the floorboards that we tore up looking for money that right. didn't exist, you know? <laughs> right, right. Can't, we can't do that. <laughs> now you've got beautiful hardwood floors that yeah. are torn up and you can't fix them. Yeah. Right. Okay. But you know what? Um, that's a lot of um, what you can't do. Oh, by the way, on the floorboard thing, if it's so obvious that we can see it, uh, a homemade or, a, or an EMT might see it as well. So anyway, right. moving on. So what are the, the best practices for, you know, where to hide or, you know, s- safe keep your, your, your valuables and cash at home? I mean, the most obvious one is get a safe. I know, I know that costs money and um, it's sort of like a attention magnet because you say, oh, there's a safe. Yeah, a safe. But uh, it also means we'll know to make sure to look in there, right? Right. And if, you're, if your threat model, if, you're, if, you're, if the thing that you're worried about is an EMT or a home aid or... Um, or, you know, just, you know, um, service folks coming in and out of your house and you're not worried about Catwoman or some cat burglar coming in and right. cracking, then they're not in most, you know, they're not going to be able to get in there. They'll just right. be aware. Oh, you know, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Solo Ager has something, but what am I, what am I going to do? It's in a safe, you know? Right. It's usually a crime of opportunity. If exactly. They walk by oh, and all your, exactly. Yes. Yeah. All your jewelry is sitting out. It's easy to just grab and walk by. Yeah. If they've got to try to figure out how to get into a safe, it's different. Yeah. I mean, I guess don't get like this mega safe that screams, I have a Picasso in here. <laughs> right, right. And also don't make it so small that the safe itself can be carried out. Right, right. But most safes are like 50, 100 pounds, so, yeah. it, right? And you can get reasonable ones. I mean, you know, on Amazon, smaller ones that you bolt, just yep. one bolt into the wall. Yep. Um, again, crime of opportunity. You're not going to try to figure out how to get it out of the wall if you're sitting in the next room and 
versus a diamond ring on the coffee table. Yeah. Someone's going to, I don't want to say someone's going to, but no, it's, but it's just very easy, likely right? someone's going to. Right, right. Don't make it easy. There you go. Exactly. All right. I think that's it. Um, hopefully this is helpful. Uh, this, this topic came up because, you know, we've been sort of talking lately about um, Bitcoin and how, how finding the, the, the keys and coins can be, or excuse me, the keys and phrases can be a bit of a treasure hunt after death. And it just reminded me that we do treasure hunts with other types of um, valuables after yeah. death. So why not cover those as well? So here's a question for you real quick. If you have a professional executor, like, cause I know this is something you do. Is it something that you would tell your professional executor? Maybe like it, it, down the road, say, okay, listen, I've got all my stuff hidden in blank or here's this code you, to my safe or what you, you can think? tell us but just like anything else with estate planning things change and yeah, you might be sending true. us on a, a wild goose chase when you have since moved the funds uh, or spent true. them right okay. and then what and now i have this burden to try to find money that isn't there anymore because you went to vegas before you, you spent it yeah, okay. yeah exactly yeah all right all right yeah. good that's good that's yeah thank you um so if you want to learn more there's a link down in the comments for the solo ager estate plan book get your free e-copy by clicking on that link perfect I uh, hope this was helpful. Um, good good walk down memory lane of all the estates we had to sort of go digging around for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you everyone for listening. Thanks, Janice, as always. Talk soon next time. Talk soon.